guys, it's Sydney here with another comparison for you. This time is between the Poco F2 Pro and the Xiaomi Mi 10T Pro. Uh, I had a few requests to do this comparison, so I thought, you know what, I'm actually curious myself. So let me go ahead, buy one, and uh, compare it. See how, see how it compares to the Poco F2 Pro. And this cost me about around the 550 mark. Um, this is the 8 gig one, 28 gig version and that, that's for the meet and see pro sorry and um the poco f2 pro at the moment you can get for around the 300 mark so it's quite a bit of a price difference between these two depending on where you get them from but what i mean by that is what country you get them from um in the uk there's quite a bit of a price difference between the two so is the meet and see pro worth that much more than the poco f2 pro currently anyway first things first let's compare the designs they are both metal and glass built, you know, typical traditional expected 2020 build. That's just how it is nowadays. And they are both excellent. For some reason, the Mi 10 Pro feels a little bit heavier than the Poco F2 Pro, but the Poco F2 Pro is the heavier one. I put them on a scale and it's about 15 grams difference between the two, which I find interesting. Maybe it's to do with the weight distribution because this is really, really top heavy. This camera lens is no joke. It's, it feels top heavy and I think that's what, it's not as balanced as the F2 Pro and I think that's what makes it feel heavier than the F2 Pro, but it's not. It's a bit thicker than the F2 Pro. The F2 Pro is a little thinner and that's because of the massive battery in this 5,000 milliamp hours. And uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit thicker. But still, with the curved back edges, it feels really comfortable. I really like how this feels in the hand. You know, after using this for a while, this doesn't feel quite as nice in the hand. I used to like how slim this was in terms of the width because it has smaller bezels. But now it feels, I don't know, Maybe if it's a bit too blocky, maybe it needs to be a bit more rounded like this is. This is a rounded on the edges, as you can see, and this is a bit more squared off on the edges. And I guess it feels a bit sharper, especially around here on the screen. But yeah, they both feel really good in the hand. You can't go wrong with either one of them. And then if we go around to the back, you can see the camera set up on both. Now it's got 180 megapixel main camera. Massive thing, that thing. And this is 64 megapixel main camera. USB-C charging, both of them. You have the speaker grills, the SIM card slots, power button, which doubles as a fingerprint scanner on the Mi 10 Pro, the volume rockers. And up top you have speaker outlets on the Mi 10 Pro, microphones, what's well, a headphone jack on the Poco F2 Pro, and the pop-up camera on the Poco F2 Pro, and a IR blaster on both of them. On the other side, you have nothing that's completely clean. Maybe that's the antenna lines. Oh, by the way, I absolutely love the fingerprint scanner on the Mi 10T Pro. All phones should have this. All flagship phones should just do this. I don't know why. I don't. I don't know why they insist on having the in the uh, in screen fingerprint scanner. Which it, it works. It it does work, but it's just not as good as this. That is just phenomenal i absolutely love that i got used to that and going back to this uh, it's fine it's just not the same just not the same as that look at that fantastic anyway we'll compare the screens it makes for a bit of a difficult conversation here what i mean by that is that aesthetically they're both maxed out you can see straight away that the f2 pro is the brighter display in isolation in isolation this looks fantastic it's only when you start looking at it compared to an AMOLED screen and it starts to fall apart a little bit. But on its own, it looks pretty good. The blacks are not quite as black, but still, it looks pretty, pretty good. On its own, it's a fantastic looking display. But it, it just doesn't compare when you put it side by side to an AMOLED screen. And that's, that's just the reality of the different display text that have been used. But the Poco F2 Pro is 60 hertz and the Mi 10 Pro is 144 now in my previous videos i have i compared the poco f2 pro to the oneplus nord and the oneplus 7 pro and they both had 90 hertz screens and i said it wasn't that big a deal you can't really tell much of a difference and i stand by that you can't but 
144 hertz is a completely different story. The difference, take my word for it, it is night and day. The difference between these two refresh rates is just, I didn't think, I went into this thinking it wouldn't be that big a deal. But after using it for a bit, oh, it is difficult going back to the F2 Pro. It really is. Using the, going back to the F2, what I was doing, I used this for a week and then after that week, I started switching between the two, so I could tell more of a difference between, uh, notice more of a difference between the two, and the biggest difference, biggest, biggest difference is the refresh rate. It is night and day. It makes it difficult to go back to the F2 Pro, it really does. So in terms of the screen, even though the F2 Pro does have this clean design, unmatched, really is unmatched, this clean aesthetic, tiny bezels, no, no notch, no cutout, nothing. It's just a fantastic display. I would have to say, I, if I, had, I would have to go with this one. It just, it looks good enough. The the, the cutout is small enough. You know, after you, you kind of just get used to it. It stops bothering you after a bit. But the refresh rate is just, oh, it's just money. Honestly, it's so damn smooth. It is absolutely money. The display would definitely have to go to the Mi 10 T Pro. Design, I would give the award to, again, I'm quite tempted by the Mi 10 T Pro, honestly, I really am. But it's a bit top heavy, justifiably. And the cutout, yeah, the design will have to go to the F2 Pro. It's just a very good looking, device but you know, I, quite, I quite prefer the back of the um, I quite like this camera layout here compared to the F2 Pro if I'm being honest but from the front yeah it goes to the F2 Pro from the back it goes to the Mi 10 T Pro I quite like that finish as well it's good it feels nice the build quality on par I would give that to both of them it's, it's a draw but actually that being said the buttons are much much nicer much high quality on the poco f2 pro than they are on the mi 10 t pro the mi 10 t pro listen to that the but the power button with the fingerprint uh, sensor is a little bit loose it rattles around a little bit and the buttons are the volume buttons are a bit mushy so i guess overall i would give the build quality to the f2 pro let's move on to Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi performance on both are admirable. They're both good. But there is a difference in the strength of the Wi-Fi. The Poco F2 Pro holds onto a signal much better than the Mi 10 T Pro does. On the other side of the house, it's not even that far. <laughs> it's really not that far. It's literally the next room. I hold onto a signal, 5 gigahertz signal in bed just fine. But I really struggle with the Mi 10 T Pro. It keeps dropping out a signal in the bathroom. The Poco F2 Pro is fine, holds onto the signal. The Mi 10 T Pro just keeps dropping it, and it's really frustrating because it's not even that far from the from the Wi-Fi router. But yeah, anyway, in terms of speed, let's do a quick test. Yeah, so as you can see, the Wi-Fi performance is about the same in terms of speed. But like I said, when it comes to holding onto a signal, it's the F2 Pro. I found it to be the same in terms of the um, using data. I found that the F2 Pro holds onto 4G better than the Mi 10 T Pro does. And the core, the core quality is quite similar. They perform about as well as each other. So yeah, as you can see here, the difference between the AMOLED and the uh, IPS that's black and that is clearly not anyway battery life the battery life on these are both excellent even though the Mi 10 T Pro has a bigger battery obviously it's not 144 Hz it's not going to be that much better than the F2 Pro it would have a slightly smaller battery at 60 Hz and that's what I found they, they last about the same so it, it balances out and it's quite impressive to be honest really impressive that it lasts as long as the F2 Pro does, which is I average about 10 hours, to be honest, on both of them. And that's with 144 Hz enabled the entire time. So yeah, that's quite impressive. The cameras. Well, with the cameras, it's quite subjective. If I'm being honest, 
is quite subjective. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to chuck some photos, some uh, sample photos into the video and I'll allow you to um, make up your own mind. <laughs> on both just walking back to my car now you wouldn't believe came in this morning around quarter to eight looked exactly like this believe it or not it's now four o'clock it's kind of depressing it's been like this all day never mind it's what it is The wide angle cameras max out at 4K 30. <sighs> Here's my right back. Just when using this Meet NT Pro, is that the RAM management is so much better than the Poco F2 Pro. In fact, the Poco F2 Pro's RAM management is actually kind of tragic. It's really bad. I don't know what else to say. Is the one I'm using is a six gig, 128 gig version. So maybe that might have something to do with it. This is eight gig, 128 gig. So maybe that's maybe that's something to do with it. But good God, when it comes to audio. There's a clear advantage with the F2 Pro that has a headphone jack and the Mi 20 Pro does not have it. But I'll be honest with you, I haven't used the headphone jack in the F2 Pro. I only used it one time just to see what it was like and after that, well I did not use it. I just used my Bluetooth my Bluetooth uh, headphones and with Bluetooth performance they're about the same. Um, it's probably the same Bluetooth radios in both of them. But when it comes to the external speakers, the Mi 20 Pro has a um, stereo setup and the Poco F2 Pro has a mono setup. What I find surprising is that even though this is a stereo setup, the majority of the sound comes from the bottom speaker, so it might as well be a, a mono speaker. The top speaker doesn't really do much. It, does, it just does highs, really, which isn't very great. But yeah, when it comes to their performance, 
Let's do a quick sample, shall we? from that the volume is about the same which is surprising given that uh, one has two speakers and the other one has one as I've always said two doesn't equal better the F2 Pro sounds a little bit louder the Mi 20 Pro has a bit more low end bass so in terms of the speaker performance there isn't much in it so I can't really crown a winner here to be honest they are, surprisingly they are just as good as each other even though one has two and the other one has one that's a surprising a surprising outcome really all right now some final points worth mentioning neither of the phones supports video over usb-c android auto doesn't work on the poco f2 pro not on mine and not on my girlfriend's but the mi 10t pro works just fine mirrorcast works on the mi 10t pro but when you minimize window it crashes casting from my poco f2 pro doesn't really work when I open a third party app. So I've opened Chrome and now nothing is happening. Yeah, that's. And this is my Poco F2 Pro. Yeah, not great. Casting works fine on the. on my girlfriend's Poco F2 Pro. Oh, you see? Purple. And uh, he's using Noble Launcher as well. It works just fine. But if I go into. As you can see, it's it's working fine, but it also has that bug where when I hit minimize window, it crashes. But at least uh, it actually works, unlike mine. The Poco F2 Pros do not support mirror link. I tried that before in my previous video. Uh, I haven't been able to try that on the Mi 10T Pro because the car that I had, that I tried it on, well, I don't have that anymore. I've got a different car that doesn't have Merrillink, so I can't test that. So, I guess do your own research on that one. Mm -hmm.